Welcome back everybody. We have another great story to share with you today. Um, L.T. Lenk is a brand new author to the program. I met her at a festival this past summer and I just fell in love with the book. So I want to share her and share her story with you. Welcome, LT. I'm so glad you're here. Hello. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. I love discovering new stories. And when I find them, I like to share them with everybody else. So that's what we're going to do today. Let me tell everybody about a little bit about your background. LT Lank, who I'm going to call Lindy, because that's her name, and we're friends now, and I get to do that. Uh, Lindy is a Detroit-based writer, poet, photographer, filmmaker, educator, and author. She wears many hats. I do. <laughs> she has a Bachelor of Arts from Wayne State and has won multiple awards for her writing, including the John Clare Award for Poetry and the Tompkins Award for Poetry. Some of her poetry and photography have been published by the Wayne State Literary Review. Lindy is currently working on the second book in the Isabella's Gate trilogy. I'm really impressed that the Wayne State Literary Review um, recognized your work and that that's a hard thing to do. So congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. That's pretty exciting. So let's tell everybody a little bit about the book and then you'll read. How does that sound? That sounds good. Isabella is a young girl whose journey begins at Margaret's Garden Gate, where she and the other children watch the old blue-haired woman water the rocks in her yard. But unlike the other children who come to laugh, Isabella comes with a curiosity and wonder. When Margaret shares her secret, Isabella's eyes are opened, and she catches a magical glimpse of the garden in its fullness. In that moment, Isabella must find the courage to step beyond the gate. But as she does, she loses sight of the flowers and soon loses faith in the garden. Does the garden really exist? If it does, where did it go? With paths unfolding before her, will one of these paths lead Isabella to rediscover the garden? I am so excited about this book. I I really enjoyed seeing it when you were presenting it at the festival. And um, I have a niece I'm going to send this to. So when you are ready, will you All please right. share your story with us? Take the microphone and read aloud. Okay. Thank you, Diane. I love reading aloud. I think it's so wonderful and important. And this is the book, Isabella's Gate. And I will be reading, um, these are the chapters, but I will be reading the first two chapters today. So... I will begin with Margaret's Garden. Take 10 steps east, then 20 north, depending on your stride, through Penny Park and up Mott's Hill, then down the other side, around the curve shaped like an S, till the road ends in a T, across the bridge at Miner's Creek, just past the chestnut tree. Of course, the way is different if you're coming from the north, or from the west side of Mott's Hill, or from South Main and Forth, whichever way you choose to take, however you map your plan, you'll see that house near Miner's Creek from where this all began. Once upon a garden stream came a yellow-haired girl in blue. Her name, Isabella, she stood just four foot two. Every day she'd walk that way with a dog leashed at her side. And while she walked, she'd dream of things, of places far and wide. Isabella would walk until the paved road turned to stone. She would not step beyond that point, but her eyes have dared to roam. Her eyes have seen the orange house, each crack down every wall. Her eyes have seen some other things she can't always recall. For in that big old orange house lives a woman with blue hair. She's lived there for a hundred years. Her name is Margaret Rose O'Hare. Margaret wears an apron of handmade patchwork quilt. It represents her family tree, much like her father's kilt. She wears her red galoshes in sunshine, rain, or snow. Straight from her bed into her boots, that's where her feet first go. Every day at sunrise when Margaret drinks her tea, she eyes her garden flower to flower to see what's new to see. 
She sings out to her tulips. She calls out to her mums. She dances with a watering can around her tree of plums. Wake, my dew-covered lovelies. Shake the droplets from your eyes. A brand new day has been made for us. Let's try it on for size. Around and round she flutters, a butterfly in flight, through daisies and through marigolds, unto her heart's delight. Margaret loves her garden. She tends to it with care. She pays no mind to passers-by who say it isn't there. Hey, old lady, children shout, what is it that you see? Your yard is filled with rocks and stones, they tease sarcastically. Margaret turns and smiles at the children near her gate. Then she hugs a sunflower as if it were her mate. What, she whispers in its ear, if it had an ear at all? Did I hear you make a wish to grow 18 feet tall? She tips her can of water and from its modest spout, rivers pour out generously, streams rush and gush about. Chanting, singing, dancing, Margaret calls the sun. I have a wish, a small request before the day is done. All the while outside the gate with her dog still at her side, Isabella quietly waits, she watches open eyed. Does she see the wonder as the sunflower grows tall? Or does she watch in disbelief? Why does she watch at all? Isabella, come with us, there's nothing here to see. The children call for her to leave. She leaves reluctantly. Does Margaret know a secret? Is there magic in her can? Isabella asks herself. She wants to understand. Why can't I see what she sees? A flower garden dream. Like all the rest, I just see stones. What does all of this mean? Sunshine turns to moonlit nights outside of Margaret's gate. Isabella comes each day to look, keep watch, and wait. She seeks to find the answers to questions deep inside. Why can't I see the flowers grow? I've tried and tried and tried. I'll hold my breath two minutes and tightly close my eyes. And after that, if all's the same, this garden's full of lies. Margaret keeps on watering, the can shakes in her hand. And like her house with crackled walls, she too is frail to stand. She hears the girl's frustration. It's true what they all say. I don't see flowers growing here. Isabella turns away. Margaret murmurs through the air. Why choose a path of stone while seedlings sprout beneath your feet from seeds your dreams have sown? What happens to my dreams each night? Do they turn to dust? Isabella cried. I want to know. I must, I must, I must. Sweet young girl of little faith, your willfulness won't do. You need let go of all you know and welcome all that's new. You see, my dear, it's simple, Margaret did explain. Take one step forward with your eyes. Nothing stays the same. Then Margaret looked around her. Her eyes blinked sweet goodbyes to the flowers and the fruit trees and the birds and butterflies. Will you tend my garden? My time here is at end. Isabella asked, Margaret asked of Isabella, your time is now, my friend. Just then there was a crackle, the sparks of alchemy, and Margaret's hair reached for the sky like the branches of a tree. More crackles sounded, more sparks flew, a flash, a gust of air. The watering can remained in place, but Margaret was not there. Then something strange did happen to Isabella's eyes. The gate before her came alive, much to her surprise. Briefly, in that moment, a rainbow crossed the gate. Little Isabella did herself illuminate. And in that one brief moment, her heart bloomed like a rose. Her eyes could see the flowers now, rows and rows and rows. She stood there in amazement. She did not turn away, even when the children called, come on with us, let's play. A shadow grew behind her while in front a light did shine. Isabella stood in awe of something most divine. What wonders do await her? Should she enter through that gate? Will she tend the garden now? What dream will she create? Chapter two, Beyond the Gate. 
There she stood before the gate that to a garden led, a garden full of wondrous things. What dreams do lie ahead? Isabella was quite scared to enter through that gate. Why, you ask, was she afraid? Why did she hesitate? Perhaps what scared her most of all was what she could become when all the things she ever learned began to come undone. Soon her curiosity grew bigger than her fear. She yearned to know what lie ahead beyond the gate's frontier. She stepped up to the garden gate and meekly peeked inside. Hello, is anybody here? She heard not one reply. Isabella looked some more and there upon the ground stood Margaret's special watering can just waiting to be found. I know Margaret's secret, there's magic in her can. Now I will make the flowers grow. Indeed, I have a plan. With her hand, she tipped that can and from its tiny spout, water sprinkled on her toes, she laughed and hopped about. She sprinkled every stone and crack she watered day and night, yet nothing seemed to sprout about. No seedling reached for light. This cannot be, Isabella said, what more is there to do? She raised the can above her head and watered her yellow hair too. Water cascaded head to toe, filling her every pore, washing across her eyes and ears, soaking her to her core. Then a cloud joined with her. It flowed a waterfall. So wet, so wet stood Isabella. The rain, the rain was all. Her heart held tight the fading glimpse while her eyes returned to stone. This is just a rundown place where flowers once had grown. Wait there, little missy, a tiny voice she heard. Her ears perked up to listen, but she heard not one more word. Whose voice was that? I want to know. Please show yourself to me. Beneath the garden stone up popped a small but wise daisy. For you, my dear, I've waited with petals open wide for you to hear my tiny voice, the one you have inside. What was that, a daisy? What did it just say? Isabella thought that flowers just belonged in a bouquet. Unconvinced as you are now, look and see again. I am both a daisy and your tiny voice within. But if it takes a daisy or a cricket or a tree for you to hear the truth, my dear, then that is what I'll be. Upon a single stone she stood, she listened with one ear. What is this truth you speak of, the one I need to hear? You know the truth already, but somehow you forgot. It's all about the life you live and the dream that you live not. Come a little closer, so with your heart you hear. If you want to find your dream, let go of all your fear. Isabella took a step in the stones beneath her feet. Bumped and rolled around the ground, they lined up long and neat. They opened up a pathway, stones and stones of blue. The sky lit up with rays of gold and vines and flowers grew. The path rolled out for miles, she could not see an end. Surely it would take her days to reach beyond its bend. Yet something felt inviting, her feet beckoned to go. This path rolled out to lead the way, but where she did not know. Step by step along that path, she did not seem to mind that all the things she knew so well began to fall behind. The leash, the ball, her dog, her friends remained outside the gate. No time to turn and gather things and no time left to wait. Up that path, she made her way. She set out to explore until the one and only path divided into four. What should I do? Which should I take? Confused, she looked about. All four paths, they looked the same. Her feet stopped still in doubt. If you stand still, you're moving back, that tiny voice did say. Remember that the planet spins. Go forth, be on your way. If all four paths lead to the top, why must I make a choice? And of the four, which one is right? She asked that tiny voice. No upward path you choose is wrong, nor is but one path right. All good paths join with the one that leads you toward the light. Down one path, she skipped along, but did she choose in haste? For footsteps sounded from behind. Was she being chased? Isabella turned around, her hands pressed to her ears. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. Her eyes filled up with tears. 
The sky was somewhat darker now. This made it tough to see. She looked around with eyes half closed and saw a walking tree. Root by root, it dragged the ground in a calm, unhurried way. At times it stopped and just stood still where Isabella hoped it would stay. Oh my, oh my, just go away, cried Isabella's fear. But I'm your friend along this path, the words brushed past her ear. I am a pine, this much is true, but we are all the same. Here in this world, we keep your dreams that wake when called by name. Isabella's eyes lit up that all I need to do is but to call each name, dream by name to make each dream come true? Simple yes, but easy no. The trees stirred to and fro. Let's hear you name a dream of yours, a dream whose name you know. Uh, um, hmm, let's see, thought Isabella's mind. She closed her eyes and thought some more. I wish the sun to shine. Wishes are not dreams, my dear, but if you wish for sun, the sun would gladly shine for you, but this day will be done. I do not wish this day to end. I see the point you make. Isabella did not know the names of dreams to wake. Where shall I go to find these names? She asked the tree to tell. But trees don't name the dreams they keep. Go ask the telling well. All our little Isabella wanted to do was to see the flowers that grew in Margaret's garden. But that one question led her to more when the one path opened to four the moment she stepped through the gate. Is it too late for her to turn around? Can she ignore the sweetest sound of her heart's voice? Will she find the names of her dreams or will she only mind them in her sleep? It seems she is facing a difficult choice. Climb upon a limb of mine, I'll take you to the place. So Isabella grabbed a branch, but it snapped and scratched her face. Ouch, that hurt me. She, but she hung strong, her arms wrapped around its trunk. She clung her legs to its jagged bark, bark until slip, tumble, clunk. I cannot do this, I can't climb on. Isabella lay flat in the dirt. Look at my dress, it's torn into shreds and my knuckles and knees, they hurt. Try, try again with all that you've got, the pine tree beckoned and bowed. If it were so easy to climb on a limb, I'd be carrying a sightseeing crowd. But I'm not a bus or a train or a car. I don't have a comfortable seat. But if you hang on the things you will see, you can't see while flat on your feet. So branch by branch, Isabella did climb till the palms of her hands slivered sore. She'd scale the trunk then slide down a bit. I just can't climb anymore. Despite her frustration, she did not give up. At long last, her grasp became strong. Now tired but pleased, her face wore a grin, for she knew in that pine she belonged. Into the forest and past many trees as a nighttime of stars filled the skies, Isabella felt snuggled, all nestled in, and closed her sleepy eyes. She dreamed of dreams that would come true if the names of those dreams she knew. Her dreams even dreamed dreams of their own while the sky set the moon out of view. End of chapter two. Thank you so much. What a wonderful story. Thank oh my you. gosh. Thank you. I I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the book to see how it ends. It's very exciting. Thank you, Diana. What was your favorite part about writing this book? You know, this book was a 20 year journey for me. Mm -hmm. um, I began it and kind of put it away for a while. So my favorite part was revisiting it and, and the story actually unfolded for me. It actually, changed and told me where it was going and it took me on a journey so between isabella's gate and my life over the past 20 years we've been on a journey together and so much has happened i mean i've got grandkids now <laughs> so a lot has happened between the time of starting this when my when my youngest child was younger and now he's married and and has a child what? 
You know, we often say in writing circles that um, the story leads you on a journey, that, that the act of writing itself is a journey, and it sounds like that's exactly what happened for you with this. Yeah, uh, yes, exactly. It's exactly what happened, and these characters are very real, as they are for all writers, very real for me, sure. and they live with me, alongside of me all the time, and they give me words of wisdom because they're very patient and wise. So um, we talked at the beginning of the program that you ha you are working on book two in this trilogy, correct? Yes, yes. Excellent. Any idea when that will be coming out? No, I'm actually, book two is all really about her dog's journey. While she went on this journey, her dog went on a journey to find his wolf roots and meets up with a new friend. And so Fun. there's a, person, a new little boy coming into the story. Excellent. So we will keep our eyes open for that one. Yes. When you finished it, I would love to have you back on the program to read again for us. All right. I would love that, Diana. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming out, and I'm so glad that we are now friends. Yes, I am too. Thank you so much. And have thank you, everybody, for listening. And have a great afternoon. And you as well.